the Raptor super fan, but his story is so much bigger than basketball. Here with his brand new book, The Heart of a Super Fan, please welcome Nav Batia. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You don't know this, but he's been charming the audience the entire commercial break. So you are not shy. Now, we're so happy to have you here. Your story is incredible. So many accomplishments. Now you're adding author to the list. Talk to me about the, how the whole idea of writing this book came about. Well, you know, I'm a super fan. I'm known for cheering. I'm not a writer. So when it first came, when my documentary came two years ago, yeah. uh, Penguin Books came to us and said, we want you to write a book. We want to publish a book about you. And I said, you know, no, no. no. <laughs> but, you know, they finally convinced me. I'm not a writer. Yeah. But as I got into it, I, I, I start into the groove, I start loving it, and I kept on writing. And I be believe me, in this book, mm -hmm. there are things which nobody knows about it. Oh, really? Nobody. They think they know Superfan from the TV or the YouTube or here and there, but yeah. no, they don't. I have shared some of the things in this thing. When I was so young, I mm -hmm. was a naughty Nabatia, I was a naughty little Superfan. <laughs> so there's so many stories. Yeah. and. Uh, uh, to date, there are going to be a lot of. There are going to a lot of time. People ask me, "What was Kobe Bryant talking to you when he came here in the last game? What was Demar talking to you? What was the coaches talking to you?" Yeah, everything. It's in there. I have a lot of stuff in there for you, and uh, you know, you're going to enjoy it. It's insider information that we all want to see because even when people are not following the Raptors, they are following you. You know, we've always known you. So let's talk about the early days uh, when you attended the Raptors game sitting courtside. You write in your book how you felt as a minority because things have really changed. Well, I was only one of the... I was like 30 people, South Asian, were star in the Roger, uh, Roger Stadium when yeah. the Raptors started in 95. I was the only Sikh with turban. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody was telling me, oh, did you get the free ticket from the bank or did you get... And I used to say yes, because, right. uh, you know, I made them feel good. You just good. play along. I play along. I said yes, but no, it was my hard-earned money and it was my passion to yeah. try this game of basketball. And the very first day when I attended this game, I fell in love. I tell you, I fell in love with this game of basketball quicker than I fell in love with my wife. Oh! I hope she's not watching. Oh, oh I'm killed. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> You're in so much but trouble. But you know what? She has played a big part of me being the super fan now. Yeah. Because being a super fan and uh, working with the communities and doing the charitable works, I think she understands that this is all. And without her and my daughter, I wouldn't be able to be sitting here today. That's right. They do what they do, so you can do what you do, 100%. I want to go back now to when your family immigrated to Canada from India. Do you remember what your goals were back then? And, and how did you see your life living in Canada? Well, I came to Canada after a very rough time in India in 84 when the riots were there, genocide was happening, the Sikhs were being uh, massacred. So there was no safe place for us in the temples or our uh, uh, home, you know, so mm -hmm. I, we moved. We were lucky enough to get accepted in Canada. And we came, and at that time, you just want to come and stay in a peaceful country, mm -hmm. and you want to earn money, enough money to make your uh, family the bread and butter on the table. You want to bring it and be comfortable with it. Yeah. And I tell you, you know, it was not an easy ride. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of speed bumps. Coming to the first day, I did. I couldn't, nobody wanted to hire a mechanical engineer with turban and beard. Mm -hmm. So I did odd jobs like janitorial job and uh, landscaping job, but I was the best janitor. Right. I do, whatever I do, I do with passion. Yeah. And then my, finally, I got a job as a car salesman in mm -hmm. Rexdale, Hyundai. And, uh, you know, and the first day I got to share with you was the toughest day for me because when I walked in, all dressed up as a salesman, all the other Caucasian salespeople, nine to ten salespeople, made fun, called me names, mm -hmm. Packy, Dapperhead, Towelhead, and all that. But mm -hmm. that's the day. It was my lowest day. Mm -hmm. And in a way, that's the day that motivated the most because I said, Nav, if you want to survive in this environment, you got to be better than good. And I sold 127 cars in three months. That was a record then. It still is a record. I'm not, I can't even say I'm surprised at all because you have to prove yourself and you have to work harder and you have to take 
all of the crap coming your way and you have to put a, keep a smile on your face. Yes. And there's something so humbling and humiliating about mm. that. But immigrants often switch the trajectory and make it a win. And that's what you did. You made it a win. And you know, so that's an incredible story. I believe when you, people go low, you go high. Yeah. And that's what it is. And that's mm -hmm. the key. And I always felt that you treat people. People ask me, how were you a, that successful of a salesman? You still carry the record of 127 cars in three months. Mm -hmm. Guys, it's no rocket science. What is it? Treat people like you want to be treated yourself. Mm -hmm. That's right. Very good. Very good advice. Now, you are because I'm like blinded by the bling on your hands. <laughs> I need sunglasses. You're the first fan in the NBA history to receive an official championship ring and be included in the Basketball Hall of Fame. I don't know how you hold your hands up. <laughs> You have been to every single home game except one. You include all the highs and lows in your book. F before I even ask you this last question, can I try one on? Mm. <laughs> How much do these weigh? Actually, you yeah. You should try on. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it on no, my no, finger. No, hold on. <laughs> okay. Oh, the married finger. Your wife again. <laughs> okay. We're just going to no, talk and skip this. No. <laughs> and I also think that they're subtle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit yeah. of jewelry. Um, I'm just wondering <laughs> what you want readers to take away from this book. Like, I'm sure we're already taking away the resilience piece and the grace that you have extended to people that were not extending grace to you. But what do you want people to take away when they read well, this book? I think people need to understand on that that how... It's not just Raptors super fan. Mm -hmm. It's what I did before, what I did as a child. Yeah. What was my, this is my origin. This book is about Nab Bhatia super fan's origin. Mm -hmm. So you're going to read a lot of things. You're going to find so much about me on it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to, I, you know, you're going to, I think, sometimes cry, maybe sometimes laugh. Mm -hmm. But I think it's going to be a very good learning experience, I believe. Because this is my journey. This yeah. is, and... <laughs> This is my yeah. journey. This is a true Canadian story. So thank you for this. Uh, thank you, Nav. I love them so much. Uh. <laughs> the Heart of a Super Fan is out now, and everyone in our audience is going to take a